know, maybe we should just sting the whole service. <laughs> that was fabulous. Welcome to the Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are glad you are here. My name is Anne-Marie Kajenski. My pronouns are she, her, and I am your worship associate for today. This is a come as you are congregation and you're welcome here just as you are. I want to extend a special welcome to any visitors. We would love to stay connected so please sign up for our communications at the main entrance. Here at Namaqua UU, we foster a beloved community that celebrates diversity, strives for peace and justice, acts mindfully for the good of the planet, and inspires spiritual growth through a free and loving search for truth and meaning. We honor the ground we walk upon and acknowledge this land as the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Arapaho, Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples, we recognize and honor the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and vow to reconcile the deep wounds that still shape our world today. We are celebrating our newest members today. Please help us celebrate with some cake at our reception after the service and after a few bites of cake and coffee, please join us back in the sanctuary for our congregational meeting. Members and non-members are invited to attend. Also today, we are having a young adult gathering and potluck at 5.30 p.m. in Parker Hall this Sunday evening. All young adults ages 18 to 45 <laughs> are invited and welcome. Child care will be provided. There is a fall fundraiser, Fun with a Purpose. This event is a unique fundraising initiative that transforms small donations into significant support for NUUC. The idea is simple. Participants choose one envelope or more numbered from $1 to $200 and donate the amount indicated on the envelope. The event begins today. The event culminates with a brunch potluck and raffle drawing on November 10th. Visit the art corner at the entrance on Sunday mornings to learn more, get involved, or contact Norma Fox for any questions. This coming Wednesday, October 16th, the League of Women Voters of Larimore County will be giving a ballot presentation here in the sanctuary from 7 to 8 30 p.m this event will also be on zoom and if you so you can go to the league website for that information for the zoom link or you may talk with fran feinerman uh, next sunday listen up with our guest speaker dr claire hammer and worship associate janet gillette since we were children, we've been told to listen to other people, especially in conservative religious settings. In this service, guest minister Dr. Claire Hammer and worship associate Jeanette, Janet Gillette get curious about what happens when we choose to listen to ourselves. Sometimes it works, sometimes things go awry, but it isn't that the, ma it, but isn't that the magic of liberal spirituality? This service is a special request from Janet Gillette, who purchased the Topic of Choice sermon from Claire at the NUUC auction over a year ago. Please take note of all our events happening this week on the back of your orders of service. If you have a brief personal joy or sorrow you would like to share in today's service but don't want to come to the mic, please write it down on the form to be collected by the ushers during the offering. We thank everyone involved in today's service and especially this morning for the Wild Alderberries outstanding music. Thank you, Anne-Marie. I know um, 
Many of you are excited to have Claire Hammermore back next uh, Sunday, and it'll be um, a wonderful service as always. And um, so we'd like to begin today with these opening words by Reverend Scott Taylor. Oh, but I first have to explain why I'm actually sitting down. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was standing quite still during Tai Chi. I was balanced on one leg. And all of a sudden, that leg decided, the knee decided not to work anymore. And it just completely gave out. And um, so, um, so I'm gimping along. And uh, so I think today I will just sit down for for everything, except if I can't help myself and stand up while we're singing. OK. <laughs> so now, these opening words by Reverend Scott Taylor. Sometimes the world outside us can be so loud, making it hard to hear those voices we once knew so well, voices that once knew us so well. And so to silence, we turn to listen for the echoes of memories that make us whole, the pain of others that reawakens our hearts, and the beauty of this wild, generous world that wants us back. Friends, in the quiet of this space, let us not just listen for clarity and guidance, but to become larger. These voices whispering from deep within are not just calling us home, they are home. We don't have conversations, we are our conversations. We must remember who we listen to is who we become. What we listen for determines our path. Yet sometimes the world outside us can be so loud. And so may the stillness we find here companion us and care for us, ensuring that we never get lost. So may it be. Amen. I invite us to share together our affirmation. Love is the service of this church and service its call. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I invite us now to share the spirit of love by greeting those around you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm doing much better. I'm actually getting around pretty good. I think so. Yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> thank you, though. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing you. Am I in your way? I'm good. So, so now I'm just intrigued. We'll have to talk further. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We can sit together. Oh, really? It's the season for it. I don't know. <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> Good morning. So it is always a blessing and a gift when we have fantastic special musicians join us for service, and today is no exception. Many of you have heard this group before, but if you haven't, I got to hear him do a sound check earlier, and you're going to be such, you're in for such a treat. And come back Friday night in this yeah. very space. They're going to be producing an entire concert for your pleasure. So it's yeah. Friday night, 7 p.m. right here. 
But for right now, would you please give a warm welcome to the Wild Elderberries. Yeah. This old adobe will turn to dust one of these days. There's cottonwood and a neon bed, just a little bit of shade. The ditch I back is dry again. Thank the Lord, the well is deep. The garden will provide again. It's safe. Yes.
That's okay. This is kind of fun just ordering people around, you know. <laughs> Maybe I should hurt my knee more often. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful song. That was really awesome. And it plays right into my sermon, by the way, but good. Uh, this is a poem by Rosemary Watola Traumer titled, Watching My Friend Pretend Her Heart is not breaking. On earth, just a teaspoon of neutron star would weigh six billion tons. Six billion tons is equivalent to the weight of every animal on earth, including insects, times three. Six billion tons sounds impossible until I consider how it is to swallow grief. Just a teaspoon and one might as well have consumed a neutron star. How dense it is, how it carries inside it the memory of collapse. How difficult it is to move then, how impossible to believe anything could ever lift that weight. There are many reasons to treat each other with great tenderness. One is the sheer miracle we are here together on a planet surrounded by dying stars. One is we cannot see what anyone else has swallowed. And we light this chalice this morning. In hope that we continue to treat one another with great tenderness. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. And as we treat each other with great tenderness, we welcome new members into our church today. How exciting is that? So I would like to invite um, Linda and Doug and Rebecca to join me in this process. As you come forward, I'll just share that as each person joins our congregation, our church is reconstituted and brought more fully alive. As each of us joins, our lives and our possibilities expand in new and sometimes unexpected ways. Each of us has our own story of when we came to the church for the first time. As we recall our own journey into membership, I invite you to celebrate how we are all renewed as members of this congregation. You want to use the microphone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yes, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good.
we're good. We've, we've well, used well, with all our new members come forward being extremely careful about the wires. Whoop. You're, it's not you. It's not you. Okay. We're good. So can our new members come forward and join us in the front, in the front of the sanctuary? Mary Ellen, Clay. Yeah, there you all are in one corner. <laughs> hold, hold your microphone closer. Hold your, yeah, there you go. A little closer. As, as you approach or when you're up here, can you please stand in front of a microphone and just introduce yourselves briefly, your name, and um, just a few introductory words about how you got in this place. And, and we'll use our microphones, not wild elderberry microphones, because uh, we've got two different sound systems going on here. So just, just to be clear, let's make life easier for ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mary Ellen Upton, and um, Clay and I came the end of March, and we're so happy to find this congregation. It has just meant the world to us to have each of you as our um, friends and family, and that's the way we feel when we come here. We're so happy to be, um, to be part of this congregation, this community. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Clay Upton. I'm the third Clay here in this congregation. <laughs> <laughs> so you could call me Clay Three or you can call me Clay Bear. <laughs> One of our friends years ago gave me that nickname. I first went to a UU in the 1970s. Took me a while to get back, but I'm so very happy to be here. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, I'm Anita Regmi, and uh, I and Randy, we moved from Virginia suburbs of Washington, D.C. this end of April. And um, as we moved here, we had already checked online and we had decided that we wanted to join Namakwa. Uh, we believed in it, so and we're very happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. I'm Randy Schneff, Anita's husband. So we moved to the end of April, and um, our two daughters lived down in Boulder area, so that was sort of the magnet that got us out here. But uh, once we chose Loveland, our chief concern was finding like-minded people, and Namaqua definitely was that for us. We're very happy to be part of Namaqua. Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Sullivan. Um, Roger and I are married, but we have different last names. Um, we've only been married four years, but. We um, started coming in March. Also, I think we were exactly the same timing as Mary Ellen. And in fact, she told my she stole my speech. So <laughs> <laughs> everything that she said, um, I'm very happy to be here and getting to know all of you. It's just been wonderful, wonderful congregation, group of people. Hi, my name is Elvis. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Roger Hubert. And uh, Jan is my wife, and we were looking for a place to find people that were like-minded, like, -minded, like uh, he said. And uh, when we started coming here, I didn't know how much of an impact it would have on me. So, and it's uh, so we're we're here to stay. I really enjoy it. Doesn't seem like we're new members. Been here for a while. I've, Linda's even Linda's even been to my house, sitting by the fire pit. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm very happy to be a member. Thank you all. For over 20 years, people have gathered in this faith community, seeking deeper meaning and higher purpose for their lives. We are grateful that you too have entered through our doors. We hope that as a member, your path will join with each of ours in mutual respect, acceptance, and love as we are each strengthened and comforted by each other's presence. My dear new members, I have a question for you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry, I just feel like I'm holding court or something. I don't know. <laughs> Do you covenant with us 
to affirm and promote the principles and the shared values of Unitarian Universalism? Do you accept the differences among us as opportunities for growth? And will you contribute your time, talent, and treasure, especially Elvis over there, <laughs> as you are able towards making this a vital and loving community? Yes? Okay, just checking. Thank you. Now I have a question to the congregation. Will members of Namaqua Unitarian Universalist congregation please stand if you are willing and able? Members of Namaqua Unitarian Universalist congregation, will you welcome these people into our congregation? Will you warmly reach out to them in friendship, including them in our activities and fellowship? Will you open Will you be open to their unique gifts and perspectives? Will you extend a warm welcome to each of them, remembering that each of us was once a new member? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> and we dedicate ourselves, all of us, to our mission. Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation fosters a beloved community that celebrates diversity, strives for peace and justice, acts mindfully for the good of the planet, and inspires spiritual growth through a free and loving search for truth and meaning. And we dedicate ourselves to our vision to radiate love, peace, and justice. Rebecca? On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to welcome you as the newest members of the Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We hope you find with us a place where you can both nurture your spirit and be part of healing the world. Becoming a member of this church is an important step, but it is only a first step. I charge you, new members, and I charge anew those of you who have been members for some time to grow on our spiritual journey and nurture our connections with us. We warmly and sincerely invite you to bring your stories of vulnerability and strength, of joy and sorrow, of doubt and faith. We invite your questions and pledge to support you as you live into the answers you seek. Now, we have a few gifts of gratitude and welcome for you. One gift is a chalice and a candle. May it symbolize the light within you and within our tradition. May it illuminate one, our way as it is combined with the light we each bring. You will also find a beautiful flower as a symbol of the beauty created in our community together. So, um, no, uh, what? <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, Rebecca's going to come around with some little packages for each of you. And, and once you receive your package, we invite each of you to take a candle right over here and light it from the flame of this chalice. <clears throat> then, please, as you accept these gifts, we will welcome you into our congregation. The significance of the chalice is that you are adding your light to this congregation and making this place even brighter. So just uh, light it and put it in the back bowl. It, it'll light eventually. <laughs> there we go. Maybe light it with a candle. Oh. <laughs> 
We're very happy to be adding your light to our light. Thank you. Anywhere just yet. Well, they went and sat down already, but may we give them a nice round of applause? Yes, thank you. Yeah. You are now members of, Uter of Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. May your light shine brightly among us for many years to come. Thank you. And each week, we support the work of this congregation and all the, all of the values in the, all the way that we live our values in the world through your generosity. In addition to supporting this church, half of your donations support a local nonprofit organization helping us to make a difference beyond our walls. And during the two months of September and October, we are giving to the Friends of the Loveland Library as part of our shared values to work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. And as we know, the library's funding has been cut significantly, so please give generously. Thank you. And now we get to hear another song from the Wild Elderberries. Passport, I presume? Is that it? Cool. I know. <laughs> Yo. 
Thank you, <clears throat> and thanks to each and every one of you for all of the ways that you give to this congregation and support the work of this church. Thank you. <clears throat> and now is the time in our service that we honor the joys and concerns and sorrows of those around us. Um, would you mind putting the microphone here? Just, yeah, or you can put the whole stand there. So if you happen to have a joy or a concern that you would like to share this morning, um, Ryan's going to put the microphone out for us today. And I'm still kind of lost in that passport of and that, that song. It was so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. It's such a joy having you guys here today. Yeah, Fran, thank you. This is a joy and it's a recommendation. Uh, Monday night of this past week, I went to Foothills to hear a ballot presentation by the League of Women Voters, and they announced they would be doing one here this week. Go. It's wonderful. You learn it's a complicated ballot. There are a lot of controversial issues, but it's well worth the perspective. They will give you the pros and the cons, and then you make up your mind. But it's certainly worthwhile. Thank, thank you, Fran. And that will be here on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. here. So, OK, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Come on up. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. It feels awkward sitting here. I feel like, does. you know, <laughs> running around um, like My I name is do. Jennifer Klein, and it's interest, it was interesting for the new members coming in because I can't remember how many election cycles it was a long time ago that Gary and I, after it, Gary and I went, we have to find people. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we've been members a long, long time, but the last four years have been extremely difficult for us physically, emotionally, and everything, and haven't been able to come a lot. But we're hoping that uh, that things are, we're both on our feet again, and we're good. So we're, we missed everybody. So. Thank you. And we hold you in our hearts, and we're glad to have you back. I want to um, mention that my son's 40th birthday is today. He was born 40 years ago this morning, and um, it, it's been kind of a, a challenging period of time for him lately, so I'd just like all of you to remember Ethan, Ethan Hudson, uh, today in, in, uh, in your prayers. Thank you. We hold him in our hearts with love. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name's Kathy. I just want to... Uh, tell you of a joy, I had the privilege of delivering a housewarming present from all of us to Kat and Clay and Ocean, who have moved in together, our little Namaqua love story. <laughs> and so um, I said, you know, we haven't seen much of you, but they've been moving and they've been painting and they've been settling in, so we will see them, but they are doing really very, very well. Yay, wonderful. And if, my friends, let's just practicing like we have before. We're holding these people in our hearts because we are, and we love them. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, I'm Elaine. Um, I have a joy and a concern. Uh, I have family and friends in both the states, besides all the others, that have been hit so hard with the hurricanes, yeah. Helene and Milton. But um, my joy is that my family and friends are all safe and uh, experienced minimal damage. But if you can help or give in any way to the organizations that are helping out there, if you can go and get help, just do it. They're so desperately in need. And the UUA has um, a, a, a hurricane relief fund, and you can find the link to that in our weekly emails. So thank you, thank you for that, Elaine. Thank you. And may we just hold, go ahead and, and come on up, Vaughn, but may we just hold all of the people who have experienced such devastation in our hearts and the loss of life and the continued struggles that the hurricanes have caused. Hi, I'm Vaughn, and my daughter and her husband recently, well, less than a year ago, moved to a beautiful house on the water in Tampa. And Helene took, moved them out. Um, it basically destroyed the main level, which is a ranch. And they moved into an apartment. And then last week, they had to evacuate there. So they're now up north in Florida. And she can't walk the dogs because it's flooded where she is. Wow. Uh, but I do want to say they were very lucky having bought their house a year ago. They had to have insurance. And flood insurance is $9,000 a year. And they bought it. And they are so glad because their neighborhood in 70 years had never had an ounce of water in anybody's home. Mm -hmm. And there are people in their 80s, a family in their 90s, who are out. And they're out because most people did not have insurance. But we also are thinking of the people in the Carolinas and North, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, may we hold them in our hearts with love. May they recover. Hi, I'm Avery, and I have a joy. And today is my mom's birthday, and she gets to celebrate that in Nashville, Tennessee. So. She, I did, could you say that? I didn't hear you. She gets to celebrate her birthday. Oh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow, that's so cool. Happy birthday. Well, we're celebrating with her today and with you. Good morning. I'm Sue Pinkham, and I have a joy to share with you. Three and a half weeks ago, I fell over a cord and broke my hip. Oh, yeah. And I'm standing here. I can walk. I can walk the dogs with Bill next to me. I just don't want to take any chances of falling again. But I've started physical therapy, and all they did was add some exercises. So I can get around without any problems, which is just wonderful. And thanks to all of you for your thoughts and prayers that 
made it possible for me to recover so quickly. Oh, thank good. you, thank you, oh, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Sue, it's so great to see you. That's wonderful news. Thank you. May you continue to heal well. <laughs> Nothing on Zoom? Okay. Well, I, w um, I wanted to share that my daughter's birthday is tomorrow. So um, I'm celebrating that joy today as well. And there are a number of, of uh, commemorations to uh, honor, I think it best fits during joys and sorrows. The, um, the anniversary of the uh, Hamas attack in Israel. And of course, then the, um, the war that has been going on ever since then. And all of the devastation and loss of life and shattering of um, entire groups of people, countries, and it's continuing to spread. So may we take um, a moment of silence for all of, all of what that is. holding all who have experienced this devastation in our vast and wide loving hearts. And maybe not so ironically, it is the day after today, today is the day after the end of Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we honor the Jewish High Holy Days and the power of atonement um, seems especially poignant given the war and all that we're facing. So my friends, with all that is on our hearts and in our minds, I invite us into a spirit of meditation Sometimes the world outside us can be so loud, making it hard to hear those voices we once knew so well. Imagine yourself on an ocean of your inner being. On the surface, perhaps, is a whole chorus of voices telling us what to do arguing and rebelling with each other, repeating fears and worries over and over, bringing regrets at the strangest inopportune times, and voices of judgment, voices of grief, voices of grudges and voices of forgiveness. Now, let's dive under the surface a little, leaving all that's in our head behind. And the deeper you dive, the more noise in your head fades, and you can listen more deeply to your heart. What is your heart saying today? Is it remembering the wild, generous world that wants us back? And let's dive slightly deeper down, maybe a lot further down, until we are on the floor of the ocean of our being that ground, listening more deeply to all that matters the most, 
all that has touched the deepest part of who you are. That which will be with you as you leave this planet. That still, small voice that honors and celebrates the very essence of you, which is love. What is this saying? What secrets does it give you today? As we ponder that question, I invite you to sing with me, voice still and small. Well, today, I am also, I'm, I'm in kind of a reminiscent sort of mood today. I'm remembering my first ministry in Cheyenne, Wyoming in 2010. And there were, we had a great interfaith group. Um, the, the Jew, we had many people participating from the Jewish tradition and from the Islamic tradition and many different Christian churches. And do you remember back then? Oh, our chalice has decided to go out, but that's okay. It's still burning within each and every one of us, and our new members are holding the light. <laughs> so do you remember back in 2010, um, the guy, I think he was from Florida, who wanted to burn the Quran on the steps of the Capitol. Well, there was um, a copycat guy in Wyoming that wanted to do the same thing on the steps of the state Capitol in Wyoming. And um, people in my congregation, you know, it's, it's great to have people in the congregation who poke us, ministers, you know? You need to poke us. And they said, no, we're not putting up with that. Um, you need to get out there and, and, and lead, lead a rally or something. So I said, well, I would love to, but I'm kind of scared to do it by myself. And so I got all the interfaith folks to join me, all the clergy. I kind of guilt tripped them a little bit, I'll be honest, but uh, it, guilt worked. Um, and they, they joined me and we had 200 people marching up the street in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and meeting at the steps of the state capitol. And it was an incredible, powerful moment to hear um, the Episcopal priest. Um, well, he, first of all, hearing the uh, imam singing recitations from the Quran, and then the Episcopal priest reading the translation and then singing another passage about peace from the Quran, and then the Lutheran minister reading the translation, and on and on with the Presbyterian minister, and myself. And the fact that we all came together and showed up for each other 
reminded me that it's possible. It's possible, it's possible in the future, and it has happened in the past. And we can make it all happen again. So I know that hanging over us is this continued anxiety of our political situation with the upcoming presidential election. Every meeting that I have been in, it comes up, like, and takes up a great deal of our time. I know it's on your mind and you know, on your hearts, as it is mine. And never have we seen such blatant lying as a part of the campaign uh, manipulation tactic. Well, we live in a time when we are bombarded by information, much of it designed to persuade to manipulate or even deceive us. Who we choose to listen to and who we allow to guide our thinking is more important now than ever. And as Unitarian Universalists, we don't take things just because somebody said so. We do things differently. We listen to our own wisdom, our own hearts, our own minds. <clears throat> so I have been listening to many of your voices express the same urgent frustrations, puzzlement, and even outrage. How could it be that so many people could believe such lies? It is like we are living in a different reality. And, in fact, we are. Quoting from Prof Professor Yuval Noah Harari, a historian, philosopher, and best-selling author, his book Sapiens and Homo Deus, and he has a new book out called Nexus. In an interview with Amapur and company, he said, we are on the verge of destroying ourselves. If humans are so smart, then why are we so stupid? Any of you ever say that yourselves? <laughs> Humans have been concerned about this paradox for throughout history. And many mythologies and theologies, they blame nature. They blame human nature. That there is something wrong with human nature which causes us to be so self-destructive. Mm-hmm. He goes on to say that the problem is not with our nature, it is with our information. If you give good people bad information, they make bad decisions, just like AI. They make self-destructive decisions. He goes on to talk about how sophisticated our information systems are, but they are just creating more division. Now, why would that be? As it turns out, it is more lucrative for social media and other information systems to create lies and stories and fantasies than it is to tell the truth. That's one reason. He says, information isn't truth. Most information is junk. The truth is rare and costly. What I hear him saying is that bad information comes coming, that bad information manipulates good, well-intentioned people to make self-destructive decisions. And we, my friends, are not immune. And this isn't new, I'm sorry to say. Social media might be new, but this has been going on for hundreds, even thousands of years. We recognize that even though it is blatantly obvious now, the manipulation of people's beliefs and worldviews have been going on immemorial. This has caused imme immeasurable loss of life and destruction, definitely over the past 500 years, since 1492. I forgot to mention that we are also commemorating the um, uh, indigenous 
People's Day, which is tomorrow. Thankfully, we've changed the name of that, and we are no longer calling it what it used to be. <laughs> As we work to dismantle those who started the whole thing 500 years ago, as we work to heal and dismantle all of that white supremacy culture, let's call it what it is. Justice, equity, and compassion are part of our shared values as Unitarian Universalists. It is part of what shapes our reality. The founding fathers, many of them who were Unitarian in their thinking, we're on to an important truth, the notion that all men were created equally. They just didn't take it far enough, right? Today, we understand this includes everyone, no matter race, gender, identity, class, or religion, or anything else. The truth, though, is revelatory. We have evolved from where they were. We understand a deeper truth now. It is always evolving and changing based on the context of the time. As Unitarian Universalists, this is a key part of who we are to question and challenge our old beliefs and to continue questioning our new beliefs and our worldview. We are committed, however, to the value that all people have worth and dignity and deserve to be treated with kindness and compassion. That is the ground of our being. All people are created equal and deserve to be treated with as, as having worth and dignity and treated with kindness and compassion. That shapes our reality. And it may be very different from other, some other people's reality. One of our Unitarian Universalist theologians, Reverend Dr. Sherry Prudhomme, explains, we declare that there are many paths to the sacred. We hold fast to the notion that one religion does not hold all the truth all the time. Not even Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> we maintain that a free, open, and respectful dialogue is one of the primary ways our theological perspectives evolve and grow. So we each look through the lens of our culture our beliefs and our values and our entire lives are shaped by these. But while we are looking to those with whom we disagree, who perhaps live out of a very different reality, before we point our fingers of blame and hatred, let us acknowledge that anything from us that contributes to the division and polarization of our country might also be manipulation of us. Say that again. Let us acknowledge that anything from us that contributes to the division and polarization of our country might also be a manipulation of us. This is a trap for everyone, ourselves included. So when and how does this end? I, I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I, my crystal ball, I broke it when I hit my knee. I, I just don't know. <laughs> I ask you, though, who benefits from a divided country? It's in the news, if you look. The answers are there. Who benefits? from the anger, the outrage, and even the hatred. When we can honestly answer that question, we find the true puppet masters pulling the strings of manipulation. 
So what voices do you choose to listen to? I hope we are listening for the voices of hope and new possibilities, because those voices are there. Listening for the voices of healing and unity, those voices are there. Listening for the voices building a common reality that actually makes sense to everyone, a common reality. Perhaps what matters most is to listen to our own truths, our own lives, listening to our deepest selves and live our best lives from our well-considered, well-argued values, beliefs, and perspectives. And in the end, perhaps the real hope lies in building new relationships of trust wherever we can with whomever we can. Relationships based on truth and honesty and a common reality that honors the inherent worth and dignity of each and every person. This is all accomplished through the power of deep listening and caring for one another. So what is it I'm really trying to say here? I don't know. You know, I, I was trying to figure that out at one in the morning, but I think what I'm really trying to say here <laughs> is we are all deeply troubled by all of the overt lies and blatant manipulation of the American people. Yet we too are manipulated by triggering our own anger, even hatred, we play into the puppet master pulling the strings, the ones who are intentionally dividing our nation. I know we are deeply worried. I am too. But the only person we can truly change is ourselves. So let us find our own still small voice that knows our own truth and save ourselves by living that truth, returning to wholeness, which cannot be done if it is not grounded in love. Living in harmony with one's own truth, grounded in love, can actually be the most powerful force to change the world. I think so. What do you think? Truth and honesty have a power of their own. And as Mahatma Gandhi would remind us, that always prevails in the end. We cannot know the ripple effect that we will have in our world. But my friends, let us stay grounded in who we are and live our best lives together and may that change the world. May it be so. Amen. <clears throat> and how about another song from the Wild Elderberries called Common Ground? Yeah, at least I hope that's what you're going to play. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What's worse than someone tuning? Someone not. <laughs> At the end of this song, uh, if you just pay attention to what Bob and I sing, there's kind of a chorus effect, and we would love for you to join in. Uh, it's basically come on down to the common ground. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. <laughs> 
want to stay up here? Do you guys want to stay up here? Do you, do you want to stay up here and do a little reprise as we're ending? If you want to. Don't know. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> we we can be wild too. <laughs> I my friends, I invite us to rise in body or spirit and connect with those around you in any way that feels comfortable to you, if you would like. And I really can't resist but share share a Mary Oliver poem as our closing words. From the journey. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, Though the melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night. And the full road was full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheet of clouds. And there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world. Determined to do the one thing that only you could do. Determined to save the only life you could save. May it be so, my friends. Amen. And I'm not walking out. <laughs> Do you guys want to play a little? Brian, do you want to play? Or, do, you, do you guys want to play a little reprise? Yeah? Of common, maybe common ground, another chorus or something? If you feel like it. Or whatever you want. <laughs>